Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. I've just spent the last uh, couple of minutes on the phone with uh, Hamden PD, uh, the 911 service, because when I put the phone into the tripod, I accidentally pressed the button on either side, which is an automatic 911 call if you don't stop it in time. So I've been spending time explaining how I put my phone into the tripod and dialed the police emergency services. Oh well, there we go. Isn't technology wonderful? But thank you very much to Hamden PD for taking things so seriously and checking and then phoning back to make sure everything was okay. Uh, so uh, our emergency services are fantastic. So thank you very much Hamden PD and sorry to waste your time. Anyway, here we are in uh, 2nd of April and I have had my, uh, I started my apprentice program uh, actually yesterday and we got an enormous amount of stuff done yesterday. We uh, went through a lot of supers here. I'll see if we can do it without all this bright light ahead of me. We've got a load of supers ready for new bees here. So I've got some nukes here and some supers like this here. So let me hold it still. So what I've done with these supers here is to start getting them ready for new bees. So what we have on the outside here are frames of, oh, I should probably move everything because I can't really get at it here. Let's try it, try moving things a little bit to see it a bit better once. One moment. Let's get a super down. So what these uh, boxes are for is a uh, picture, if you will, the single brood chamber colonies that have come through the winter and they need to expand upwards. So this is going to be the second brood chamber for them to grow into. So it needs a combination of food and room to expand. So here, what we're setting up here is uh, frames of foundation here, frame of honey, some room of drawn comb for them to expand in these four middle frames, another frame of honey, and some more foundation. So as the bees move from a cluster down below, they'll move up into this space and start taking hold, the queen will start occupying these four center frames right away with food on either side, and the cluster will grow in there. And as that colony expands, they'll eat their way through the honey. And the foundation on either side, if the cluster is really big, they will get started drawing comb here as well. And certainly by the time I come to split these colonies, usually they're building on these frames of foundation. So this will be going on to the strongest colonies I have this spring once the weather is right. So just to show you again, we have foundation with extra wax put on here. Another frame of foundation here. A frame with a fair amount of honey from a dead out. More honey here. Bees will clear that up. And then we have some drawn comb. Drawn comb, or mostly drawn. Drawn comb. Drawn comb with a little bit of honey in it. And another frame of a bit of honey there. And then mostly foundation. Bit of drawn comb on that side. Actually, I'll swap it around and do it that way around. And likewise here, mostly foundation. So move these back over and so that's what I'm doing with these supers here and I've got quite a few of those made ready to go I've also got some colonies here where I will be adding new nukes into these frames so new nukes into these supers I will have a frame of honey a bit, a bit clumped up but frame of honey on the outside here, a frame of drawn comb, another nuke will go in here, drawn comb in 
into here frame of foundation here and another frame of honey there so these will be ready to receive new bees as i make my splits um, and colonies so i can grow them up and uh, ready to have larger number of colonies myself so i've got some a number of supers prepared that way and a number of supers prepared this way for going over the tops and of course i'm just going to monitor everything as we go along so we'll be making a few changes as to hives as they go along i've got a few supers here from dead out so i've got lots of frames of honey here or parsley filled with honey so these will go into other supers as i make them up i've got a load of um combs in the pool shed right now for supers of combs that have no honey in them so the frames of honey will be mixed with frames that have uh, no honey in and they are going to make up more of those second stories because i have a lot of colonies to expand and of course i've also got a lot of um, hives where I had foundation that wasn't built up last year and so I've repainted them in wax and they're ready to expand this year so we have quite a few things going here oh this is a a new toy which is going to go into the bee yard here I just acquired this last week it is a long hive and uh, my friend friend Mark Ralph Schneider has uh, made this with his friend for me looks like a big coffin but it's actually going to hold over 30 langstroth deep frames and so i'm going to have this as a, um, a little bit of a toy to play with it's a very heavily built construction so it is um got a uh, inch and a half well very thick wood see how thick the uh, wood is here uh, various dividers here we'll do a video on this when we've got get bees going into it but this is called a lung hive these things in here are the legs that i've got to reattach and there's my inner cover so this will be going up as soon as i have bees i can stock it with that's going out there but first i've got to get it painted up so that's gonna be fun to play with it's the long long langstroth hive well it's a long hive using Langstroth equipment. It's not a long Langstroth hive. I've had my first delivery of sugar, thousand pounds of sugar, ready to go into the sugar mixer. And what else? I'm starting to move equipment like winterizing equipment out and getting other stuff ready to go. I'll be making, by the look of things, I'm gonna have to make up some more deep supers uh, because I am gonna have a lot of colonies as I split them. I'm down to oh, about 1,500 pounds of honey in stock at the moment down from about uh, oh, near 3,000 pounds. Uh, so sales over the winter for the honey were pretty good. So, busy, busy. I spent this morning making uh, pollen patties because I've used, I'd used them all up. So I've been making pollen patties to go onto the hives this week. We're finally in a spell where we're having some good weather coming up. So today the weather was in the high 40s, but it was windy. Uh, it's going to be round about 50 to 55 degrees every day for the next um, week, as far as I can see, week to 10 days. Getting down at night for the next couple of days, it's going to get down to just below freezing. And then after that, it's supposed to stay above freezing. And that's the beginning. We're getting close to the point at which we can start expanding colonies or, where appropriate, reversing the brood chambers. So remember, for using supers like this here, set up to go as a second story, what you need is you need that colony, let's say 
this is the colony it's going on to. This colony, the new colony that's going to receive this second story, needs to be full of bees. So a cluster which occupies nine or ten of those frames in the super from the top to the bottom and the weather forecast to be mild enough so that when you put this box on and the bees have to heat up two boxes instead of one we don't end up by chilling the bees brood down below so you have to have two things right the cluster has to be big and the weather forecast has to be appropriate if neither of those things are if one of those two things isn't right it is not time to um to uh, either reverse the brood chamber or to add the extra box you, because what you could end, actually end up doing is as opposed to speeding up the growth of the colony you'll actually slow it down because remember they have to retain that heat in the box and it has to be they're already occupying as much of that space as they can do and with brood and if you suddenly change the heat dynamics and they're losing a lot of heat to an upper box which it didn't have before the cluster can't keep everything as warm as it could have done and the brood around the edges might get chilled and if you start getting chilled brood in your new hive then all sorts of things can start happening going wrong chalk brood european fowl brood all sorts of things so don't expand too quickly um, the conditions have to be right big cluster occupying almost all of the box and then the weather forecast has to be right if you try doing this with a frame uh, with a forecast where it's getting down to near freezing at night and uh, for 45 50 degrees during the daytime but the cluster is only say five frames of bees you may be chilling that brood and you'll actually reverse its progress as opposed to accelerating it so what other things have we got going here i've got a making a bit more equipment um, but now with my new apprentices here I'm gonna they're even starting my helper yesterday Shelley was even tidying up my shelves every time I turned around she was doing something else extra which is wonderful it's great to have that extra catalyst for things happening having some uh, uh, fresh perspective and extra help and extra energy coming into the system so yeah I'm really looking forward to working with my other four apprentices I'm taking on five apprentices one per day of the week so you can see a variety of people helping me out over the coming days so I'm really looking forward to that anyway just wanted to do a quick check over of things um, tomorrow I'm going to be getting more equipment out of the pool shed because now with extra help coming in, I'm going to need uh, to be ready to keep these people busy because they're coming expecting to do some work and I've got to be ready for them. So uh, uh, things are starting to roll this week. I'm Peter Cowan, The Bee Whisperer. See you next time.